Hey guys, my plugin company, Black Salt Audio, is releasing a new plugin very soon, and I thought it would be cool to take you way behind the scenes and show you from start to finish how we actually make these things and develop these plugins. So the first step for any plugin is obviously the idea. What, what do we want the plugin to be? And I'll show you this board here. This is a program called Trello. We use it to just kind of organize our ideas and manage our projects and see you know, what's an idea, what's actually in progress, what's finished. And so we have this list here of all the ideas we've had since we started the company. And when it's time to start developing and planning to release a new plugin, the first step is just to look at this list and discuss and decide what do we think is our best idea here? And not only the best idea, but also what kind of fits in the flow of what we've planned for the business in terms of, you know, we kind of have a, a rhythm of, are we releasing kind of a more complex workhorse plugin or are we releasing something that's meant to be a little more quick and simple? So with all those considerations in mind, we decide which plugin we're actually gonna go ahead and develop. And in this case, we decided to develop this idea that we initially named BSA telephone, and it's meant to create that really classic lo-fi telephone effect that everyone uses in like almost all of their mixes and just make it a heck of a lot easier to achieve that effect. And in terms of coming up with good plugin ideas, it usually happens one or two ways. Number one, it's it's from a, a problem or a frustration that I'm having. For example, on our last plugin we released called BSA Clipper, I was constantly frustrated at the clipping options that were out there. I, I just didn't like any of the plugins that I tried or that I saw on the market. And so we decided to just make our own clipping plugin that did exactly what I think it should do, stripped away all the nonsense and the noise and just made it quick and easy and enjoyable to use. So that was Clipper, that was born out of my own frustration. And in the case of the new plugin Telefy, it, it came from wanting to simplify some other processes that I was constantly doing in the mix and a lot of repetition and really slim that down into a quicker, easier, more streamlined process. So when we talk about the telephone effect, like I said, this is something that we're using all the time in our mixes. I mean, here's a, a playlist with some of my work here. Just check this out. There it is in the intro of one song. Here's another one. Here's another one. Again. I mean, that's four different songs where we use some version of this lo-fi telephone effect just in the intro. And then of course, probably in probably three quarters of these songs, at some point in the song, I'm using this kind of lo-fi filter on some element in the mix. And I found over the past couple months that I kept getting annoyed at the process because I'd say, okay, this lo-fi effect would be perfect here. And then I'd start building this chain and it was a lot of repetition. And sometimes it only needed one plugin. Sometimes, you know, I need three or four if I want it to be really distorted or compressed or something like that. But generally over the last, let's say 10 years, I'm following the same steps every time to create this plugin chain and create this effect. And it was kind of annoying and repetitive and boring. And so I thought, what if we create a plugin where all of the possible sounds that I've ever needed or ever think I could need for this type of lo-fi telephone effect were just in one interface. And then instead of having three or four plugins, we could just have one and it would feel really great to use and it would be really quick and easy to dial in. That was the idea and we decided to roll with it. And from there, the next step, step two, was to sketch out all of the DSP. So DSP means uh, digital signal processing. And I used to do this just honestly with kind of pen and paper and send that, but lately I've been using this program called Figma or FigJam, which is pretty nice. And I just kind of drew out the signal flow of what I wanted to happen under the hood of this plugin. So we've got the input, then from there, it's going into an optional dirt stage or distortion stage. And I originally had this later in the chain, but realized that it actually needs to be first if it's gonna be there. Then we've got uh, the filter. So the high and low pass controlling how narrow it is or how wide it is and, and where that filter is in the frequency range. Then we've got the option of having compression. And you see, I have this note here that I just wanted one knob. You know, I didn't want a threshold control and an attack and a release and, all of that stuff, you know, for this, I just wanted maximum ratio, aggressive compression, fast attack, fast release, and just one knob for the user to control it. Auto makeup gain, none of, you know, the fanciness. Again, we're trying to simplify things here, right? Then last in the DSP chain, we added a slap delay. It's just a nice kind of texture effect that helps this uh, kind of lo-fi sound sit in the mix or, or give it an extra lo-fi feel. It's a nice option sometimes in the mix. Then we've got a mix knob, wet dry, and then of course out to the output. So that was my sketch of the signal flow. 
I've got some other notes here about you know what I want the controls to be like. So I sketched this all out, sent it to the developer, and I also sent him a, a video to go along with it. So here's the video I sent in this case for Telefy. And basically all this video is, is just walking through this signal flow diagram here, just like I am in this video, but then also opening up Pro Tools and creating kind of a dummy signal chain that's kind of approximating what I want to happen in this plugin. So I kind of show some examples, show some actual material, what I want it to sound like. You know, I might say for the compression, let's use kind of like a, a max ratio, fast attack, fast release. It sounds kind of like this one on the SSL channel. Then for the distortion, let's use something like this. Down on the pavement, broken gravel. And then for the slap delay, you know, let's let's use something like this. So just kind of dialing in different settings, just so the developer has an idea of what I actually want things to sound like. And then I hand off this video and the DSP sketch to our DSP wizard, and he gets to work on um, taking these ideas and these sounds and turning it into computer code, which is a complete black box mystery to me. And that brings us to step three, which is the first development build. So I'll show you what it looked like here. So very ugly, no fancy graphics or anything. But basically what this build is for is for me and my partner, Sean, to really dial in the settings that we want. For example, we wanted makeup gain on the compressor. Now there's different ways to do this, I guess. And we had to decide, do we want static makeup gain or dynamic makeup gain? And we could hear those differences and decide which one we wanted. Another one was something like uh, the distortion, right? So we've got this distortion control here, but we've got to decide, well, if you turn that knob all the way to 100, you know, how distorted do you want that to be? Do you want it to be like a little distorted? Or do you want that maximum amount to be a lot distorted? So we've got to kind of decide where we want these minimums and maximums. And, you know, when it comes to the the low and high pass filter, you know, what's the what's the narrowest it can be and what's the widest it can be? And the compression, we could test that. Make sure the makeup gain was all right. Hear the slap delay. So we spent a little bit of time kind of trying it on vocals, on drums, on entire mixes, just trying to dial in those minimum and maximum amounts and then relay, relay that to the developer. And then also any bugs we find. For example, in this first build, I noticed that with the distortion, It gets really loud, right? Of course, if you're distorting something, it gets louder. So I realized, hey, we also need an automatic gain adjustment on that distortion knob so that as we increase distortion, the perceived volume stays relatively the same. I also noticed we had some phasing issues on the, the wet dry mix here. So we send those bug reports and those changes and the final values we want for the minimum and maximum back to the developer. Once those changes are made, we get another version, and this is kind of the final debug version, or the final, I call it ugly version. And this is where the settings that we chose are all baked in. So you can see that this is uh, much simplified. We've gotten rid of the kind of min, max uh, debug parameters, and this is just kind of the final DSP and controls of the plugin. You see we've got the auto gain compensation for the distortion there, and we've sim simplified the filter down to just two knobs here, effect and tone. And we got compression. Mix knob with the phase issue fixed. And the slap delay. So this gives us a good idea of how this plugin feels to use, right? These are, it's an ugly version, but these are the controls that are gonna be included in the plugin. And I found right away when I loaded this thing up was like, oh yeah, this, this makes dialing this effect so much simpler. So we double check this, make sure it's all good, and then it's time to move on to making it pretty. So that brings us to step five, the UI or user interface. 
design. And this is kind of happening at the same time as some of this DSP debugging stuff. Um, so my business partner in BSA, Sean, he does the first mock-up here and he does a pretty good job of it. This is the very first version that we had of the interface, just kind of a rough idea of the controls we wanted. This kind of white text was me just uh, go, grabbing my iPad and, and writing in some labels that I wanted on the controls. So that was the first version. But the problem I had with this was that all the knobs were kind of the same size and nothing really stood out. And so to me, it wasn't very clear for the user, like what should they grab first? What's the first knob they should turn and what's the next knob they should turn? And so then we ended up with something like this where the effect and the tone, you know, how, how wide or how narrow you want the um, filter EQ. And then do you want that to be like really low and, and muffly, like lower frequencies, or do you want that to be really thin uh, in the high frequencies? Those are the two main controls. So we made those a lot bigger to stand out. Then we've got the optional controls like compression, distortion, slap delay, and the mix knob. And this felt a lot better right away. So once we're okay with this kind of mock-up layout, then we send it to our professional designer who kind of adds the special sauce. So here's what he came back with here. And you can kind of see these two side by side. So just a little more texture, a little more depth, a little more just special sauce, I guess. That was the first version he sent us. We had to, you know, add and tweak a few things just based on, you know, the final processing of, of what the plugin has to do. A lot of that had to do with the, the output here. And then I also had some notes for like this little filter graphic here looked too much like a wet noodle to me. So we had to change that. Um, so this is what we ended up with. So there's roughly the final version of the UI. And this is really just kind of in a, a flat graphic file that they send us. And then once we approve this final version, the designer chops this all up into the individual elements that the programmer needs to actually combine these two together, the, the DSP with the UI. So that's step six to approve the UI and then actually put both of these things together. And voila, here it is. We've got the skin on the bones, so to speak. And this is basically the almost final version of the plugin that we can then move into beta testing. So let me show you how it works here. So I love this because right away, as soon as you load up this plugin, boom, in one click, you have the telephone effect and then you can tweak and refine it from there. So Guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. this effect knob basically just controls how extreme you want the filtering effect to be. Guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that be and then the tone, you can either have it be kind of low frequency focused or high frequency focused. Guess and having it so simple like this obviously makes it very easy to automate. You know, you could have a, a nice filter sweep like that, or you could have it start really kind of narrow and then widen out. Man, right away, it just, it feels so, so nice and easy to use. You add some compression to really get the vocal up front, or it doesn't have to be a vocal, it could be anything. Distortion. some slap delay and then you can even blend it show it to you on drums as well So we check this internally first, of course. You know, I check it out, Sean checks it out. We send it to our team of beta testers and we just wait for feedback. We wanna hear, is it easy? Are they confused about it at all? Does it feel good? Do we get kind of an instant uh, hit of great feedback, which we did for this plugin? And of course we wanna make sure it's not crashing anyone's DAW or computer. And after the step of beta testing, you know, we fix any bugs that happen to crop up. And then once we're, once we're good and we haven't found anything else, then it's time to just send the final build that has all the licensing system built into it. And then it's ready to release, which brings us to step eight, which would be just designing the website, 
the marketing and the actual launch of the plugin. So that's it in a nutshell, how we design and build new plugins from scratch. And this one feels great. I think you're gonna love it. And if you're anything like me or probably any other mixer out there, you've used this effect a ton of times in your mixes. And this is just gonna make it a lot simpler, easy, fun, make it more creative, get rid of all of the tedious repetition that you're doing with all these other plugins to create this effect and just put it down into a few knobs and give you the result, the sound that you want in a few seconds rather than minutes. And over the course of weeks, years, hundreds of songs that you work on, that makes a big difference in your happiness as a mixer. So depending when you're watching this video, the plugin is either coming out very soon in a couple days or it's already out. And either way, you can go to blacksaltaudio.com to try out the plugin. You can either buy it right there or you can pick up the free trial. So that's it. Let me know if you guys liked this video because it's pretty different from the usual style that I do on this channel. So drop a comment. Let me know what you thought and I'll see you next time.